This podcast is presented by the Petite Victory Collective. Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Modular Stories. In this podcast I would like to create a platform for people to share themselves, their stories, their experiences and their life lessons. Before each episode my guests can build and patch their own background music with the help of my modular synth. My goal with this podcast is to inspire the listeners, spark their creativity and to share these incredible people I get to talk to with the world. I hope you enjoy it. Sure thing. Well, uh, my name is Peter, also known as Tater online, which is a bit of a alliteration on, my, on, <laughs> my, on Peter. Um, and I'm an electronic live music performer. Um, uh, got a background in playing win, uh, in bands and learned to play the piano from uh, from a younger age. Um, and uh, yeah, as a side, you know, from working in IT, I uh, also like to uh, to to do electronic music uh, as, a, as a as a hobby next to it. Yeah. Yeah, but as a hobby, I would say it's pretty, pretty successful and mm -hmm. quite professional. Thank you so much. I mean, uh, we're, we're playing shows together. Yes. You're playing shows, you're bringing out records, we're bringing out a record together. Yeah. Which will come out next Friday from where we are recording this. Yes. Which, if you're watching this, it's the record out. is out. Yes. Nice. So check out the check new out. Rebound EP that we did together. Yes. Um, why did you want to, what, do you want to tell the story of how that happened? Oh yes, oh man, but where do we start? Because like a lot, like a lot happens, <laughs> we'll, we'll cover a lot of uh, topics there, but maybe it's a nice, nice one to get started with that we actually met through the uh, Petite Victory Collective, yes. uh, which we can go into uh, uh, maybe later on as well, but it's uh, it, it just in uh, very briefly, it's uh, uh, a community of like-minded uh, musicians that like playing with hardware and uh, like to make electronic music. Um, I don't actually know how you how you got into the the uh, into the uh, into the collective, but I posted like, uh, hey, I'm uh, looking for new uh, people to jam with, and you were very enthusiastic, <laughs> very enthusiastic about that. So I immediately sent a message back, and we picked out a date. Um, and uh, yeah, we met in Amsterdam. You took your stuff and you said, well, I have some gear and we're going to just see what, what happens. Yeah. Um, and then we got together. I took my whole uh, synthesizer rig and we connected it and we, we jammed for a little while as I, as I uh, often, often do with, with other people as well. Um, and we basically recorded a full EP, like in a couple of hours, which was uh, really amazing. So yeah, it was crazy. It was super productive. We just like I, I came in there with also no expectation, but just to have fun. And then we just started going, and it was such a vibe and, and super fun. Yeah, it was it was it was, it was extraordinary. And you know, no, and and not down, downplaying any of my of my mm. other uh, jams, but it was uh, very nice that you. You know, you have a background in, in music as well, so you were uh, able to, to listen in very well, like, hey, this is going on, this is what I'm adding to the sound, and we had a very nice, like, back and forth between the sounds coming from your machines and yeah. uh, those of mine. And even, you know, without uh, without us really rehearsing that much, uh, we were like, okay, there's going to be a drop in, like, four seconds, yeah. and we counted it down, and it was like, uh, to this day, the best drop I've created oh, that, in an album. That was, so that was, that was sick, yeah. yeah, and it was created like live. So that was yeah. I mean, yeah, that's uh, maybe to conclude. Like, who am I? I think that's the that's the part I get most excited about. Like mm. creating something in a live situation. And now there wasn't an audience, um, but especially you know also uh, creating stuff together with a live audience. Yeah. Uh, and just to get that 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 spark of the creation process, yeah, uh, and being being a little bit part of that. No, for sure. I mean, I, I totally get that. I love the way you just like meet with people, and you do that a lot. You also said that that you just meet with people and jam with people just to see who they are, and also like with. I, I mean, I was a stranger at that moment. You know, yeah. we, we never met, we, we <laughs> yeah. never talked. It's like, hi, I'm Tim. It yeah. was just like <laughs> we connected via the via the collective, yeah. and then just met up and and played music. And the whole purpose was to play music together. And that's that's such a beautiful way of meeting people and meeting creative people and creating together. I, I really admire that, and I think you're doing like a lot of. I love watching your jams. They're always super nice, and it's always super nice to see what kind of person. The, the person you're jamming with is and who you are within these jams because it's like such a uh, 
like little thing about your personality, yes. you know, that you yeah. just see who this is yeah. in their music. And it's yeah, it's so so funny to see as well. Maybe to to elaborate a little bit on the on the process as well, because yeah. I think it's very very interesting to see. Is that um, once we start jamming, I always already set up all the gear. Mm. Uh, like you're now setting up for the podcast. I'm yeah. also setting up for a recording. So in case we want to record anything, we just need to press a button and then yeah. you can record. But it's not like uh, immediately recording from the from the first get go. There's first like this safe space to sort of figure something out yeah. and, and try a few sounds. And you know, I'm also figuring out my drum kit and you know, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> going through all the snares until it's a perfect one um, and then once like something is is like something is is almost there then I say like okay let's let's let, let's bring it down yeah put it to silent again and then we press record if you're okay press record and then something happens that's so cool to see because uh, like parts of the song are already there because mm -hmm. you rehearsed a little bit you picked out some sounds but that drop we did not create. No, we no, did no, not, no. not create before that, not that actually. Planned. Yeah, before that actually uh, <laughs> happened. Uh, it's the it's the song uh, rebound by yes. the way. Like what uh, what the EP is also called. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was super exciting. And then yeah, meeting up afterwards to uh, to edit the album and seeing you, you know, do the do the whole production thing. Um, yeah, it's crazy. We've we've only met like a couple of times. That's it. Uh, but it feels it's like the fourth time we're seeing each yeah, other. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 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 it and it yeah. Also because we're also working offline, online, online yeah. of course, and yes. we, we chat back and forth. Uh, but it's nice that we have such a you know a relationship without seeing each other so much, and then just almost going on a tour now together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's super nice, and I also love that so much that with music you just connect with people so much easier, and you have this common ground where you can just go off of that it, it doesn't matter you know you just connect and it's always it always feels almost like family from the get-go in in some ways but i also really much appreciated the way you like welcomed me for that jam because for me it was the first time ever doing something like that you know i i also had a have a background in like band playing and mm -hmm. like jamming there but then i went into electronic music so i don't play live anymore and to just like have the time to produce everything and like perfect everything and then to the jam threw me completely out of my comfort zone in that sense because I was just like, oh, I don't know, I've never done this. I don't know how this will go out. I don't have like a keyboard at, at all to like play something. Yeah, I only had the know. sequencer with you. Yes, yeah, I only yeah. had the sequencer and my iPad and then just trying to see what will happen. And um, it was super nice of you to like just have me in there. And then you did so much work to like prepare all the sounds and uh, the, the songs were all pretty much composed by you from the mm. get-go. It was also, I just tried to add my flavor, but you had so much creative spark in the beginning to mm. do these songs. And um, I was I appreciate that really much. It was super nice and I enjoyed a lot playing with you together and doing the jam. Thanks so and much. Then, and then all of a sudden we're here and we're playing a show here, tonight. Right? Yes. Got an album uh, or an EP coming out. Yes. Tonight uh, is the, uh, yeah. the, the High Tech Mess. It's a yeah. little festival concert we have uh three or four three colored squares yes three no no <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes we have three colored squares you mm -hmm. me but i think there's also two others performing right yeah we have another yeah. ellie reza who is going to do the the lights installation he's got a yes. very cool uh uh, and microcontrollers with uh, motors uh, moving the LED strips around and, and having them be interactive with the music is crazy. Uh, we have Igor who does the visuals. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so we'll be live uh, visuals on the screen. Uh, hopefully also with uh, uh, interactive to the music or at least being controlled wow. by him as well, like actively performed. Yeah. Um, and then we have Sabrina who's going to do live coding and we have Matt doing the DJ set afterwards. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and of course your debut uh, uh, of your your solo live performance. I mean, that's yeah. going to be uh, be uh, be cool to see. It's gonna be fun. I'm 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 really excited about this as well. And it's the first time we're playing songs from the EP as well again. Yes. Uh, in the in their like finished version. Yeah. Which is which yeah. is super fun. Yeah, it was super cool. We just like 
met up today. You know, you picked me up from the uh, from the uh, central, and then we ate together. And now we're doing the podcast, and then driving to the concert. It's yeah, still has to take some pictures in between for the press. So, yeah. Oh yes, yeah. right, right. <laughs> this is also happening. Yes, it's so much stuff. Yeah. It's it's all much happening today. But it was super fun to create the the whole EP and also go into like then you did all the advertisement work and yes. the printing of the posters. We have little posters. Yeah, we should. Yeah, come on. Uh, I'm going to show them. Yes, it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's like a limited run, so probably I don't know if we're if we're able to uh, maybe we'll do a second run. But I'm gonna show it anyway Wait, because I it's a very nice, on that. very yes. nice part of the process. Um, is there uh, original design made by uh, Mich- uh, 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 Gemi Gemi yeah. Art, um, which is uh, yeah, which is awesome. She also did the 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 art for my uh, for my. Uh, I can. I don't know if I can. No, I should probably just have it like. <laughs> over here like a yes, it's, it's going to be in the background yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. but it's a, 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 a Chemi a designer uh, that I that I knew uh, a, a while before uh, who did the, the artwork for my uh, my, my own deep debut uh, EP and she came up with this uh, which is uh, yeah that's, it's just very cool it's very blue it's, it's yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah very definitely blue. inspired she was also at the at the live uh, yes. uh, at the the alive. Th- yeah, that was event. the, the yeah. first time we performed together. Was your release concert for your EP? Yes. Can you tell the story about how this EP came to be? Oh man, yeah, that's a nice one. Um, yeah, so maybe maybe to to sketch a little bit of the context. Um, uh, I, d- I did some music before and I I, I played with the band uh, and I started missing that music creation process mm-hmm. a little bit and I saw these videos online of people uh, doing like something on the the op1 mm-hmm. uh, you know that uh, yeah, that machine you could do everything everything ba- basically on that same machine and i was really yeah i was just really inspired by that and we had i had an ipad somewhere so i thought oh, i just create these small jams mm-hmm. um and i learned about the, the january hashtag like hashtag january on instagram it, yes on instagram um to play uh, to record like one little snippet uh, every day of the of January and then post it. So it's going to be super work in progress, unfinished drafts basically because you cannot produce like a whole thing, uh, a shiny album uh, so in one in one night basically. Um, so I started doing that, and the end result was always a jam on uh, YouTube and then a little snippet on Instagram just mm. to, to promote it a little bit. And then the fun part of that was uh, that you had this community of people uh, responding to it and cheering each other on like, hey, uh, uh, this sounds great and uh, maybe you can do this tomorrow or you know, giving each other a little bit of feedback. Very constructive, of course, and mostly like just keep up, you know. Uh, yeah. uh, and then uh, at the end of Jan- January, you have a-, a bunch of ideas and the first couple of years, I never really re- revisited it or went mm-hmm. went on with it. But after uh, joining the the collective, the Petite Victory Collective, I saw these other people actually uh, producing record and putting it out, and you know, bringing it on Spotify. You have a very nice collection of of music as well, and this is something I didn't do before. Uh, and I dabbled a little bit. I took a, like a mixing class just to learn a little bit uh, uh, from someone who, uh, who uh, shout out to uh, Zege, by the way, uh, who le- uh, let, uh, showed me a little bit how uh, mixing and mastering works. Um, but then they, yeah, everyone just cheered me on and said like, why don't you just produce an, uh, an EP? So I revisited the January tracks and uh, get, went back to the computer. Like this community is uh, a, a little bit about uh, uh, and not being too much in front of the computer. So mm-hmm. uh, like the hashtag Dawless is also a thing yeah. to try to make music without having the computer screen on. Um, um, but then, uh, yeah, going back to the DAW and doing, uh, uh, producing a little bit, uh, 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 producing it there, um, and then creating creating a, like a real EP out of it and uh, getting cheered on and getting some advice from people in the community was how it, uh, how the, how the jams then uh, got got like uh, to something that was you know, shippable as a as a, uh, a yeah. as a as a CD as well. Yeah, but that's that's also the cool thing that you went the extra mile there and then really also put it out and made CDs and made posters for that as well and made a release concert of of that. So it's super cool to see that that from these like little moments something like this big can also happen from that and it's super cool to see how you did that. 
And yeah, also I wanted to talk about this this doorless thing because like oh, yeah. that's also what you have, right? Your yes. setup is completely doorless. Yeah. So so sometimes people look at at my rig and they see the the, the half box in in the center, mm -hmm. and I mean it's almost a it's almost a computer. It also runs software, and you know, but it, it it's it's just very different of uh, operating a, a mouse yeah. and a keyboard. And looking at the screen and, and and maybe also the way it's laid out. I mean, if you work with Ableton, you also have the live view, yeah. which is already a big improvement. But then still, uh, if you press record and you do the live thing, then afterwards you're going to dive in and rearrange stuff and and uh, you do the automation and it's a lot of clicking. And I mean, yes, you were very quick at it, so we were able to 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 to, to do a lot of mixing work in just a, a, you know one one uh, in, in a day session. Mm -hmm. Um, but but it misses a little bit the feeling that I'm looking for when I'm playing mm -hmm. music because yeah. it's about that improvisation and about that that sense of that something can go wrong, which is like exciting and also a bit stressful, but also uh, 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 something unexpected can happen yeah. uh, when when performing something. So so when I'm when I'm doing the uh, the the, the dollars playing, I also record. Uh, what 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 is being played at that moment, and mm -hmm. usually also have the camera on it. Um, uh, so there's a lot of videos where you can actually see the creation of the, the thing instead of uh, just seeing the end result, which might you know have had polishing for weeks on end. Um, which is a it's a different genre, I think. Yeah. It will probably never be like a mainstream track that the whole world listens to. Um, but being part of the collective has also shifted my perspective a little bit on who is your audience. Uh, yeah. Because it doesn't need to be like a super big Spotify yeah. hit or something. Yeah. If you have uh, already the people in the, in the collective uh, listening to it and coming to, uh, to the show where you're playing it, uh, that's already yeah. That's already uh, uh, giving, a lot of, uh, giving a lot of feedback and getting to that place where you want to be creatively. For sure. I mean, I think there was this quote by I think Rick Rubin who always says that you're not supposed to be like making something for the audience, but mm. just for yourself mm -hmm. and completely ignoring the audience for the whole creation process. And I think that's also really what it's about mainly. It's just like doing it because you want to do it yeah. and to have this internal thing of wanting to put it out like that and wanting to have this performative approach. And I think that's also the difference between like still the hat hacks and the uh, DW that the DW is really about producing and like making something digitally that is there like in the studio whereas like it's not about performing it mm -hmm. necessarily but the hat is really much performable um, with the DW maybe also partly inside but it doesn't really matter it's about playing it live and about yeah. doing that and that's super super cool yeah and maybe to elaborate a little bit more for I don't know if there's people interested in all the technical <laughs> stuff because I'm really much into all the technical stuff. Um, but I've got the, the setup now. Um, uh, yeah, you can of course see it on the Instagram. It's a, it, it's a, a guitar pedal board and I uh, picked out all these synthesizers and stuff that's very small. So it's a very small footprint, like 80 by one meter. Mm. Um, and um, uh, we have um, the MIDI brain in the center, which is the hot box, which is it looks a little bit, uh, the, the layout looks a little bit like how Ableton Live works, but it only sends MIDI signals. Mm. And the MIDI signals then get routed to a, a, a drum of a, a, a sampler, which plays the drum sounds, uh, a, a polysynth, digital polysynth, uh, analog bass synth, um, uh, the uh, uh, lead synthesizer. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, I'm mind mapping it out. <laughs> it's a good practice for the show tonight. Fair. Um, uh, and even got the compression in there as well. So there's side chaining and I have the mixer, which is a super small 12 channel mixer that I can do a full multi track recording. Um, so, so. Uh, when I'm playing, I'm actually you, you hear all the instruments uh, live, so there's not not a lot uh, being uh, uh, recorded in front. Like mm. Some maybe vocal samples, or for the live track, I recorded it with a guitar, but don't want to take the guitar all the time and just for that one single sound. Um, 
so yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's a dollar setup, which means that I, I have full control over each of the sounds individually, uh, which is uh, stressful, but also <laughs> but also really cool because you can uh, every time that you play something, it's uh, it's something different. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that on the drive here yeah. a bit about like how it is to have something that is very stressful in life situation because everything can go wrong, mm -hmm. but also the beauty in these imperfections and the the second approach of having like a lot of things done beforehand so you have all the control to have less stress but then also a bit of this this liveness goes goes missing and um yeah you, you had a really nice uh, look on that where you said oh well it's a bit of both worlds maybe you know finding finding the middle ground and that's i think how you approach the the set tonight as well right yes yes um Yeah, I was uh, uh, inspired by one of uh, one of the artists I think is really cool, uh, Stimming, Martin Stimming, uh, who it has also has this live mindset of I want to uh, want to play stuff live because it's more interesting, uh, uh, but but also having a little bit of pre-cooked things. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I also have a little backlog of uh, of songs, so I can uh, I can take some stuff uh, take some stuff back uh, to make it a little bit recognizable. Um, uh, but finding finding the balance there. So uh, sometimes I, <laughs> in previous uh, previous shows, I also uh, include like a part where I would say, okay, this is like more improvisation, and I just mm. build something. But that's also something that you can co completely get lost in. And uh, uh, someone uh, I don't know who it was, but uh, to quote that said, uh, well, people who are there just to dance don't really want you figuring out uh, the, the right snare sound for your, for your song uh, which always it always stuck with me but i think that the the audience that's coming tonight uh, knows that it's all like a, a more of a, a like a technical live mm. show and they yeah. know that stuff can go wrong and they know that it's not listening uh, like listening to david Guetta's produced album you know when you when you go there which is kind of different from a dj set right yeah. because you're playing like super polished songs that are like really loud and uh, exactly uh, exactly made for 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 dancing and paced that way um, But of course, there's also this this opportunity of being able uh, to to tune in what's happening on the dance floor mm -hmm. and saying like I want to this build up, you know, I can see that I can I can stretch it even longer for one more bar or for four more bars, you know. Yeah. Uh, and being able to do that live is, uh, is 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 a great is a great feeling. That's like, true. Uh, yeah. Being able to, to you have more like control that. about the audience. Yeah. And you can influence a bit more and see what the vibe is and. What you can do, and I think so too. I think also with the res with the release event you had, it was all about like the creation of it. You know, nobody was there to just like dance and have a rave or whatever. It was all about like seeing what you do and seeing your work. And then afterwards, you also gave this little workshop of how your yeah, setup yeah. works, and it was super cool to see all these intricacies of your setup of how you work with like, like the even the Raspberry Pi that is like controlling oh, yeah. the visuals and everything. Yeah. It's, It's super cool, and all the technical stuff is super interesting as well. And I could never do that. That's so, that's really really sick. So many moving parts, and you just bolt on. Like every everything yeah. is a new project. <laughs> you just bolt it on, and then <laughs> once you look back at it, it's like, oh yes, it is kind of a spaceship. It's I was actually I was actually talking to uh, Ali Reza about his uh, lights. So we did connect uh, while rehearsing. We did connect the rigs, and he was able to listen to the to the kicks coming out of my uh, system and then responding to that with the lights. Oh. And I was like, oh, maybe we should also like add the light setup to it as well, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Bolt on some LED lights and have that, uh, have that uh, go. And then there's a, a, another moving part that can blow up uh, in at the show, yeah. you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I remember the, the third, it was the third song we had, right? Where yeah. at the end of the set, uh, you can see it in the video, I think, of the yes. jam. Yeah, we have the exact moment. Yes. Yeah. Uh, suddenly your your machine just completely crashed and yes. uh, it was super perfect because it was on bar <laughs> like on beat one of a bar after like an eight bar pattern so it was like perfect ending <laughs> it and was I, the end of the song and yeah. like the, the the last note was sort of re repeated so yeah. the, the the synthesizer was still going on so it was not like a complete like everything went out which is nice of a like a modular system but that's true it was funny just Okay, yeah. yeah, turn it off, turn it on again. And then <laughs> the brain died, it so it was all just <laughs> yes. over the place. But it was also very nice because I, I didn't even realize your system crashed. I was just yeah. like, yeah. huh, huh. what is he doing over there? Yeah. just stuck on that note. But it was, yeah. 
it was that's also one of these imperfect moments that just happens because of life and that was so cool that we just kept it in like that also for the like more polished version of yeah. the song yeah yeah there was yeah maybe just to to harp a little bit on the on the the rebound ep um uh that i that uh, i think is really cool that um uh, uh it was a concept that you that you came up came up with because uh, we took the jams that we recorded uh, and we, we we published them as, as YouTube videos. We took the the, the multi track recordings of this uh, of this jam, mm. and then made like a an edit from that. And the, all the material we used was basically from the jams yeah. itself. So we did add like a couple of sounds here and there, and I think there was like a, a, a like a sub bass missing in one of the songs. So we did you know add some stuff uh, in later on, but like the. The, the 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 soul like the 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 heart of yeah. everything was basically all wave files yes. recorded uh, at the jam itself so we did not do all the like the uh, when you record something in midi and you change like oh now we want to have to cut off like w one minute f uh, further it was all from the from the uh, from the source material and then the idea that you had i really liked uh, uh, was to have the three songs in order of the of the EP, but mm -hmm. also adding the source material. Yeah. Um, uh, so the, the 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 EP is now uh, eight tracks, right? So we have we have the three polished songs. We have the three original jams, which were also mixed and mastered. We have a mix of the of the polished version, and we have a mix of the original jams. Uh, which in, in the start I was like, oh, but if you've listened to the polished versions. You don't want to listen to the originals anymore, but that's there's still something in there, and it's yes. also it's. It, I think it's also really cool uh, that you're able to listen to the original version and hear the moments where some of the 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 yeah. the, the, the material came from. It's like a, a looking a little bit into the process itself of the of creating the creating the music. For sure, I mean, like the editing of it was really. You could have done that analog as well. Mostly, what we did, you know, it was almost analog anyways because we i don't know why but we couldn't get the like tempo Time, right. yeah. <laughs> so we we couldn't have it on grid and ableton so basically we all cut everything all by looking hearing. at the yeah. transient <laughs> and by hearing like okay is this this now so yeah. it was very much analog and very much just like seeing what was there but uh yes finally this this part of like having the mixes in there as well and things like that I actually get, got the idea of uh, from a friend of mine, um, Claudia, because she like after we released the shout YouTube, out to Claudia, shout yeah. out to Claudia, <laughs> because after we released the the the, the jams on YouTube, uh, she she said uh, she like texted me and was like, she always works out to these tracks, mm. and it was too short. She was yeah. always like, man, you know, I have this ten minute video and then there's like a twenty second ad, ad and then yeah, yeah. another video. It's like I have to find that I want to do the workout, so I was like, okay, yeah, sure. So then, why not just have all three mixed together? So if you want the thirty-minute version yes. of the EP, you can have that. If yes. you want the ten-minute edit, then it's it's all there and all pre pre done. Yeah, yeah, and released on Bandcamp. And, yes. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and what a, yeah, it's also so funny that um, uh, about the, the Alive EP, I was doing that and I was publishing it and I thought, oh, it's going to be a Bandcamp release, but then I put all this effort into it and then Chemi made like such a nice artwork, it's you know, it's, it's still, like, I'm yes. also going yes. to show this one, yeah. oh. because I'll, of course we also, have it, we also have it over here, hanging proudly in the office, of course, let me show this one, because it's so cool, just showing it. It's a very yeah, just I, I love this one. It's it's close to my heart, of course. The first the, the yes, first real uh, real artwork, but like the the technological side and the more natural side of the of the live live performance, all uh, from live performances. Yeah, really cool work again by uh, by Chemi. Yeah, she's doing amazing things. <coughs> where was I? Uh, where was I going with the story? Um, Both band releases and oh yeah, the Bandcamp release. Uh, and then yeah, we had the nice artwork and then it was, oh, yeah, of course it would be awesome to create a vinyl, but uh, that's like, uh, like uh, that's at investment. least 100 copies and yeah. uh, quite a depth investment, like 15 euro a piece. So you want to make sure that you <laughs> actually sell some of those to recoup the, like, the production cost. So, you know, that will come sometime. So I went in between like a cassette tape 
too little space to do the uh, to do the artwork justice. So that's uh, that's a CD, a physical CD that you uh, that, uh, can probably when you're watching this still order <laughs> uh, if they didn't sell out at the at the concert tonight, of course. Um, so that's like a physical thing as well. And then we had the the, the rebound EP. We had the nice artwork. So I thought. Uh, yeah, would it be nice to have like something physical? So at least we have yeah. like, uh, a, 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 a print of this, which is uh, yeah. yeah the, cool the, the prints are also super super nice. It looks it looks very great. It's nice wall art as well. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I mean, is doing amazing work. Yeah, nice. So then the, the the show tonight. We have another show coming up. Yes. In I don't know when it May. was. It May. Was something yeah. end of May. Yeah, in Deventer, called Deventer. Maximaal, which is also uh, yeah so cool that uh, uh, Barend, uh, uh, also known as Oorspray, was at the at the live event and uh, yeah, you're and doing great networking. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some networking. You put out two con concerts for me, um, yes. for us, yes, in, uh, already. Yes, it's and it's nice to just get get a little bit of that that experience going as well because yeah. um, uh, oh. It, it, going into a complete separate thread again but um, uh, Baron said oh by the way I'm also organizing parties I'll invite you sometimes so yeah. that's uh, that, that's that's really nice there maybe another topic that's that's nice to to hint on is this this idea of doing shows um, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Amsterdam dance event mm -hmm. and not so much for just raving and like uh, all the partying but more for the conference and the, uh, the, the, the audio lab and like the place where producers go to do like producer uh, challenges and stuff and meet all the people and for me it's like a, a, a heaven to you know um, Everyone that I talk to is a potential <laughs> jamming partner, so yeah. <laughs> you know I have a lot of people that I uh, that I meet over there and that I yeah. that I do uh, that I do some uh, some jams with. Um, um, where was I going again? I lost my train of thought for a second. Oh, about uh, about uh, um, the the live shows uh, that. Uh, that that I asked a little bit around, like, uh, hey, uh, is there is there are there slots for like live shows? And uh, uh, it, everyone's playing this so safe. They all want to have like a DJ set completely prepared. And someone said like, uh, yeah, there's one person who does a live set, but it's a pre-recorded one. So yeah. <laughs> so then there's like a recording of a live set and then being played at at a festival, which I found so so sort of uh, weird and interesting at the same time that most people just many there to, to dance, have a good time and maybe yeah. not so much interested in the creative process behind it itself. But you can see it a little bit happening, right? Because there's you see a little bit more often that there's live sets um, uh, probably also because the artists get a little bit bored if they just uh, mix their songs together, yeah. uh, uh, not throwing any shade at, at DJing because that's super hard to do well. But it's also like <laughs> it's completely different it's, art. Yeah, yeah, it's a completely different uh, way way of uh, way of working. But yeah, I have uh, I have a little hope that the, the whole live scene will, will come up uh, a little bit more uh, and and reach a, a little bit broader audience next to all the people, the technical people that are interested in seeing like how the synthesizers work and stuff. Mm. No, that's super cool. I also wanted to ask you how the whole thing with music started. I know that uh, your parents were at the release event as well, and, and they talked with us a bit about like how you grew up and oh, did music. Nice. But I, I, I want to get the core of what started everything and how you switched from like also playing in bands more to the electronic side. What made that happen? Oh, interesting. Yeah, the, uh, reminder to myself to also speak to your parents because they're going, <laughs> they're going tonight. So yeah, yeah, I'll you, ask you, them the same. Uh, you can get me back. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the same uh, questions. Um, like, where did it come from? Uh, and, well, as I said, learning to play the piano, then switch to the electric guitar because that was more of the style that I listened to. I had a lot of classic rock on the radio, so I wanted to play like the old Van Halen songs and oh, uh, yes. uh, later the like the more technical songs, uh, uh, a bit of the, the Dream Theater and the Metallica and uh, no, um, a bit in the in the the, the, the rock uh, the, uh, the rock background. Um, and finally, um, uh, when I met my wife. Uh, she was actually f more into the electronic music mm. and I wasn't really aware of that and I had a bit of the bias going on from well you know DJ just, just, yeah. just press play and, uh, yeah, yeah, and, and um, uh, she introduced me to a couple of uh, bands that really changed my perspective on this. Um, example for that is uh, 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 Massive Attack for instance. They do like a very nice uh, and uh, uh, air, Massive Attack, air. 
uh, maybe even uh, uh, DJ Shadow, uh, uh, do some sampling work. But uh, the, the, those first two, they really have a combination of uh, like a band performance. They play bass guitar and play drums at the at the shows, but also use synthesizers in, mm -hmm. in an interesting way. And Massive Attack maybe leaning a little bit mo um, uh, more heavily on the, the electronic part. Uh, electronic part as well, Daft Punk, of course, you know, they made, uh, that one, that one uh, did uh, like spark, me. Okay, yeah, or, uh, originated from, from me then, so that was the most oh, yeah. electronic dance thing I, uh, I experienced, but once, uh, once uh, uh, she said like, hey, uh, uh, listen, to, uh, listen to these things, and I got, got into that more, and well then it basically shifted over more, I still listen to some, uh, some rock music every now and then, but it's mostly uh, electronic music now from uh, like the constant stream of releases coming from the collective. Yeah, yeah the collective is another huge part of, of uh, I think your work and also my work and just like the mindset and the community behind it. It's great work by Guillaume. Yeah. Shout out to Guillaume. Yeah, shout out to Guillaume. <laughs> yeah, Atlas Castle. Yeah, definitely. But it's, it's such a nice way as well to like be together and like just I don't know, it doesn't even feel like, like competition at all. It's just like all these musicians coming together under this label, under this collective to like create art and to support each other. And there's so much great things happening with all of that. And like this event also happened through the collective, I must say, like with Three Colored Squares. Yeah. He was also there yeah. at the release party and yeah. then just was there uh, again later on. So it. Just everything connects through that, and it's super nice to see that. Yeah, maybe maybe to 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 add on and to continue on um, uh, from the band life. This was something that I really missed uh, mm. uh, of jamming. You know, when you have when you're playing in a band, uh, it's very usual to go to another band's practice night, take your yeah. guitar, and you know, all right, just plug it in, just play something. This like the chord scheme, and uh, and and, 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 see and, and yeah, see see what happens. And in electronic world. It doesn't happen that often no. actually so the first times i was reaching out to people because i i thought it was uh, like i thought it was very uh, uh fun that you know if you're jamming with a band you need to be able to uh to, to keep a rhythm mm -hmm. uh to play and you need to know the chords and stuff uh you need to have a lot more like te te technical uh, awareness to be able to play whereas in the tech, uh, in the, the electronic music world, if you connect your MIDI cable to the other person's installation, then you're synced in time. So you cannot really go out of out of time, or you have yeah. to go out of your way to make something like go out of out of time. Uh, and you can program stuff. So you can even say like I set it up in a scale, and every button is uh, a key that is that is in key. So it's actually. Uh, I thought even easier to play together mm. uh, because uh, you can program some things and you know that it that it will not not, not go that wrong. Um, but I have to say, like people are quite hesitant to 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 share that because it's such a you have so much control over your own sound as well. Yeah. Right? So if you play with someone else, then it's suddenly you know a baseline coming in. It's like oh, I, I need to need to need to respond to that. Yeah. Uh, and that was something I really found in this electronic collaborations again, like that uh, feeling of uh, band practice and creating something together and uh, riffing off what yeah, someone else yeah. is doing and creating something on top and then seeing if you can create yeah. something. Yeah. yeah, I had a really nice talk about that with Six Missing as well. Uh, he's another synth enthusiast and also composer from, from the US. Um, and, and he says that um, a lot of like jamming is actually not about playing, but listening. Like, the most important thing yeah. about, about jamming and I think that's also something that is then far more important in the electronic jamming as well because you don't really have to have the skill because you see everything that is coming and you know everything is coming but it's a lot about like how you communicate to the other and how you like try to find your way like what's my space right now what can I add to make the whole thing better and then the great thing about what we did in the jam as well was because there was no audience but just a camera without audio you could just scream to me and be like okay <laughs> drop in four bars, like three yeah. four yeah. go yeah. and yeah. Th that helps so much to just like do something together and to to create something and there the jam was really an eye-opener for me to like how to be able to play electronic music live without djing because I, I didn't know how that works, and you showed me a whole new world in that tallest thing. Yes. I'm really excited to 
not really explore tonight yeah. because I'm still <laughs> too new to that. Just make so sure that it sounds good. Yeah. Keeping it safe, but uh, for for the future, it's something where I really would like to go also more into and see where where that ends. Yeah, it's really cool. It makes me think of uh, of uh, a, a very cool thing that I wanted to shout out as well. Uh, it's the um, uh, the the circle of life. It's called. Uh, mm -hmm. Sebastian Mullard runs, runs that and I think that's really cool it's still something that I want to explore more and maybe in the future also look into and I think the collective is a great place to start there but um, uh, the idea it's it's a similar maybe some people know Stor S-T-O-O-R uh, uh, which is also a group of uh, musicians led by Speedy J which is a, uh, a well-known uh, DJ uh, um, which is a group of people doing a live performance so they have like about six people on stage and they start at like 5 p.m. and then go you know uh, all the way through the night and it, it's just one big techno uh, uh, mm -hmm. how do you say this event yeah uh, and they have people coming in and taking a break and then you know taking over uh, the the different stations and the different synthesizers uh, which is it's, it's such a such a cool experience I saw this the first time with Sebastian Muller this uh, circle of life uh, and they and they always had it almost like a like a, a bit of a conductor uh, mm -hmm. Like someone who, who uh, uh, maybe uh, gives a little bit of cues, you know, like uh, he even had some hand gestures. If you look at the videos, you can see him like uh, we're going down or we, we, we make a build, you know, or like uh, in three, two and, you know, uh, right. doing, so, doing some hinting on what's going on. Um, but very subtly. So it's still, it, it's not like you're, you are uh, playing a violin doing exactly what the conductor says. You're you're just uh, uh, making sure that, that it's not only chaos, but that there's a little bit of organization going yeah. on. Uh, and then you get to these real nice results. Uh, because of course in this digital, in the electronical world, you do need to think a little bit about the spectrum of sounds, right? If if you have four people, I, I did some jams with like four to five people, and if you have five people playing a bass line, it's going to be, you know, uh, uh, a challenge to uh, to to mix that or mm. to you know make that make that sound really good. Um, uh, but there's yeah, there's there's something in responding to what someone else uh, what someone else is doing and thinking about like listening what you what you said before like listening how can I add on this and not sort of uh, uh, and mess it up, or to, yeah. you know, if, if someone's playing re really high note, then oh, maybe I uh, uh, take the lower registers, or oh, someone else is already uh, doing a, a, a drum sound, so maybe I can focus a little bit on an arpeggiator or yeah. do some do something else. Yeah. No, yeah. that's that's super beautiful. I really like that. I like that idea, and maybe uh, enough opportunities to uh, to to explore that. Maybe, uh, uh, yeah, we've been harping a lot about the Petite Victory Collective, but uh, uh, they're now also organizing a yearly uh, meetup in uh, Copenhagen, which is a very cool place uh, to be, uh, which is also going to be a combination of a couple of headliners from the, from the uh, Collective of the Doers show, but also having like an open mic night where mm -hmm. everyone just takes uh, some stuff, uh, uh, some of their gear and uh, sees if they can do a jam together. So I'm still thinking about what to take because Are you the thing going? that I yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah, going yeah. but the, I cannot take it on the plane. <laughs> yeah, they will never let me. They will never let me in. So I, I have to choose something that will probably feel like uh, making music without him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll I'll yeah. probably still make it work. Yeah. No. Then you're in a similar situation that I had the first time we jammed because I wanted to take my modular. Mm. And I, I ordered the case, but the case didn't arrive in time, <laughs> so I couldn't take my module. And then I was like, "Now we need something else." Shit! What? What do you think? You got the nice, you got the nice uh, Moog Werkstatt, which, which is yeah, that, that, that little really, guy is really really helpful. A very nice growly sound. I tried to reproduce it for yeah. the rebound song tonight. It didn't actually completely get there. It's there's still something in that, like uh, I don't know. It's a very specific sound. I like it. Yeah, it helps if you. Uh, you have to rewire the output back into the filter to overdrive oh, to it. get that. Uh, yes, the that's that character sound. because yeah. the Moog itself also doesn't do that. Mm. But if you have a way of doing that, that that helps a lot. That's how I created that. Yeah. Because I also had like no idea and was like, no, this, but this is missing the the, the bias. Yeah, 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 in nice. a way. Yeah. Cool. I have one more question for you, dude. Yes. Like, it's more of a more philosophical question that I always ask my guests in the end. Mm -hmm. um, it's about a theory I, I read about in a book. 
and it's uh, called the museum life. And um, there's theories that um, that after, like once your life is over, that then you get to go to a museum that is about yourself. So then in that museum, you enter and uh, everything you did in your life and the time you spend your life in is accurately portrayed in this museum. So if you hopefully slept eight hours a day, then like one third of this museum will be filled with sleeping anyways. But that is supposed to like give you more of an overview of like how you spend your time and what you do in your life that you would like to have in this museum. And uh, I want to ask you if you maybe had some, some thoughts on that, on what you would like to have the in room the museum. Plan, how the museum would Yes, what you would like in there or what you don't like in there or whatever. Mm, oh man, that's a good question. Oh, <laughs> a lot of different things. Yeah. Yeah, I like a lot of different things. Uh, so there are definitely, you know, the cheesy answer will definitely be a big part about the family, of course. I'm really, uh, really uh, uh, got some adorable kids uh, and a lovely wife. Uh, there'll probably be uh, a heavy technology section for sure. Uh, I like this in work, but also in uh, basically everything that I do and writing about that. Um, yeah, there'll be a special place for the... There, there'll definitely be a, a rave going on <laughs> somewhere in the, the exposition hall. Where it's the, like a nice yeah, basement. Like a, like a boiler room uh, <laughs> experience where, yeah, where you can stand and have that feeling of people standing around you and having a good time. Oh man, what would be there? There would be a lot of uh, notes, I think. I, I talked a little bit about that. Maybe uh, uh, read one of my blogs about uh, uh, about the personal knowledge management. Where can people find uh, your blog? Uh, if you go to peterpeerdeman.nl, peterpeerdeman.nl, that's like the hub of all, all things. Um, where where you can also go to the the coffee blog because I'm very much into uh, 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 making coffee, uh, tasting beans and stuff. So there'll probably be uh, like a bean, uh, where I say it's coffee tasting, uh, cupping uh, uh, a portion of the museum. Man, so many hobbies. Did a lot of photography, so there'll probably be some photos hanging there. Nice. Um, man, just gonna uh, keep on with the. Uh, with, uh, <laughs> With the different uh, with the different hobbies, um, yeah, and um, maybe um, yeah, a lot of uh, maybe extra extroverted things, just in different communities with different people. Um, I like to play uh, games as well, and also going a little bit overboard there with the, with a the clan, and you know, organizing these uh, these uh, uh, gaming events. Um, ah, I just just like being around other people that that share uh, uh, share the interest, and that and especially if you can create something together, that's uh, that's uh, that should be the the call to action. I think of the museum when you leave there, it's like. I want to uh, I want to create something with you have to, uh, with you have to leave people. together. You cannot yes. leave the museum alone. Yeah, yeah. You get like a goodie bag with like a small a small uh, bag stuff that you have to uh, <laughs> put put together yourself, and then uh, you can play some music on your own. Yeah. Beautiful, man. Thank you so much for doing this. This was a lot of fun. Thanks so much for having me and uh, for uh, for a place to uh, to to record the story. It's uh, uh, really nice. I'm looking forward to uh, both tonight seeing your your material for the first time uh at the release of our ep uh, yes. uh the, the the show that we're playing uh in uh, in deventer the maximal show uh but uh, who knows what other things we might let's see together. yeah let's let's keep that open i'll definitely link everything your blog and your website and your work and um, yeah check out the ep and uh, the recap of the event and download and, uh, all these things at uh, tatemusic.com as well Probably also linked in the Peter Peterman, but uh, nice. Great. Thank you so much.